Hi, my name is Pamela Cooper White, and today I want to talk about the unconscious. The unconscious is something that is an interpretation, it's a way of understanding what it means to be human, that in fact neuroscience in many ways supports the fact that we have this much consciousness and at any given time there is so much more going on inside of us and around us and even between us as we co-mingle our unconscious with the unconscious of other people that we are in relationship with. So the work that we do here is often to talk about what is going on in that large iceberg. And there are really two ways, especially, that we can talk about how that's important for preparation for ministry, for activism, for being in any kind of relationship or any kind of group. The first has to do with in pastoral care and counseling, for example, where you are sitting with someone who has come to you to listen to them for some kind of help, perhaps, and you are talking to them and you're feeling all kinds of feelings within yourself as they are speaking. It could be that there are things that are going on in you because of your own personal history are now coming up and they're clouding the picture. We call that projection. You begin to project your own stuff onto that other person. And when you do that, you're suddenly not able to fully be present to them. You're not listening to them. Now suddenly you're, you're listening to what's going on inside of you and all of those people and, and experiences and feelings that have been a part of you since childhood are coming up and there they are and it's pre creating this screen so that you can't even fully see the other person anymore. And so we need to become aware of that, and whether we do that through group work, through therapy, through spiritual direction, through prayer, through healthy relationships, some way to become conscious of all of that stuff that's in the iceberg so that when we're sitting with someone, it doesn't get in the way. So this is a very important basic skill for ministry, really, is how do you get your own stuff out of the way so you can see the other person clearly, and yet, how do you use your own reactions also to become sensitized to what they truly need? The second way in which I think the unconscious is really important is that the unconscious also exists in groups. And the group could be as small as a committee of three. And the same process of projecting that internal stuff, particularly the stuff that's unresolved, and particularly the stuff that's most negative, those are precisely the things that are going to come back to haunt us we project our own inner demons, if you will, our own inner conflicts onto other people, and then we begin to have conflict or disputes with them because what we're really doing is playing out our inner conflicts onto and into the other person. We can get into a kind of an interlocking dynamic where both people are playing out their own inner dramas with each other, and suddenly a whole group can be split and we also see that in national politics, we see it in racism, we see it in sexism, we see it wherever we have a psychic need to make someone else or some other group the other. We can push that other away, we can demonize that other, we can call it the axis of evil, but what it really is often is tapping into that otherness that's inside of us that we don't want to understand. And so I'd like to close with a thought that takes us back a little bit more to the theological realm is, how often do we perhaps project that same kind of otherness onto God? How often is the divine a place where we put our own inner conflicts rather than surrendering and allowing ourselves to be open to whatever the divine might have to offer us? And isn't it possible that the divine is offering that to us through other human beings. Thank you.